everybody. Welcome to the DYM Web Show. Doug Fields here with the Queen, Katrina Edwards, the uh, star of the show, Matt McGill. And we have two very special yeah, guests. My own head. Um, very special. One, Megan Hutchinson, who is... Um, I didn't even know she was going to be here. I didn't know he was yeah. going to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have the surprise. Cool. How special is so it? We know Megan. you guys have some conflicts <laughs> to work through. We wanted to role play yeah. some intervention. All of a sudden, yeah. this is feeling a little different <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. Uh, anyway, Mom, Megan Dad, is long-term youth worker, speaker, writer, author. We're doing some stuff right now on helping hurting kids. She's the queen of that. And she's friend, dear friend, and we have her sit in whenever we can. And Josh is out of town this weekend. It took two of us. Right, to it took fill two of Josh's us to fill place. Josh's spot. No, it took half of you to <laughs> fill Josh's spot. But here's the deal. And then find out Matlock's going to be in town. I'm like, oh, yeah. you are you are the primary sponsor. So yeah. when Matlock no walks into town, here's what we do. Most of us bow. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, primary sponsor. <laughs> the Hayden YS primary. sign up. <laughs> yeah. That's it's right. like, quick, somebody find that. <laughs> Dig it out of storage. <laughs> Matlock is here. If you don't know Mark, he is the president of Use Specialties. Uh, the premier training resource organization in the world, global domination, <laughs> world headquarters. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, Mark, we do what's happening? Books. More Explain the books and more languages. You do publish more. Yeah. That is. Uh, you specialize is the Coca Cola. Ooh, not the Pepsi. It's not the Pepsi. No, it's not the no. Pepsi. No, no it's, the, it's the standard. Hey, what's happening who's at the, who's specialties? Best? What's what's it's going okay. on new? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. there's a lot of really exciting things going on new. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we've we've been really working on, you know, we kind of for the first time in youth ministry, we have, uh, you know, a real veteran class that's really you know developed and trying to figure out how do we leverage the wisdom of all these. Mm. You know, youth ministers that are uh, that are in their fifties, you know, that are, are coming lifers, and so we put together a YS coaching network, and uh, the coaching network is kind of based on um, this uh, assessment, proprietary assessment tool called the M Core, and so we've been working on that, and then um, you know, one of the last I tried to tell these guys about the M Core, and I hacked it. I know. Well, we were going to have everybody take it well, before I came okay, out. Okay, so here's this. Well, what's the M stand for? Yeah. Other than Miguel. The motivational and core. Ah, oh, yeah. the motivational core. So he has yeah. me take it. I take this thing. What motivates you? Well, he would. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, I don't remember. Well, you, you'll see. How if else I can I control you, Doug? <laughs> 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 when oh, you if know, you find when out you know how somebody's, somebody's motivated, motivated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, then you can be That's like, right. oh, I got you. That's right. right. And so, what do you, what do you so we're in Chicago and we're sitting over pizza and just talking. And he's like, "Well, here's here's what it is. I'm. It's one of those tests that you take and you you find out new things about yourself. Yeah. Like I really did. I was like, oh yeah, you you totally nailed me. I don't remember the answers right now. Yeah. My arms are huge. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember. I remember. I remember you. After you took it, you texted me and you go, "This thing's like magic, because it's different than any other assessment you've ever taken." And if it there was anybody to know about magic in youth ministry, that would be that would be great. Right. But I. Yeah. Right. But, yes. I uh, but I. You know, most most assessments that you take, they ask you to you know pick between two things or give a scale of which thing is greater. This thing asks you to tell stories of about things that have happened in your life hmm. and then you answer questions about the stories and it gets to these motivational things which are the, I, I consider the motivational payoffs it's basically why you do what you do and when we look at youth ministry you know the the job is pretty similar you know we yeah. have a Sunday program we got a midweek program we do summer camps we do camps but how we go about our work and what fulfills us in going about and doing that right. are very very different and different environments either help you get your motivational payoff or they don't. And what's been really fun is uh, I've, mm -hmm. I've been doing these um, personally with and then training this group of 10 coaches to initially start kind of this uh, the launch of this. Um, has been sitting down with youth pastors and helping them understand why they're not feeling fulfilled, why they're being drained in their work mm -hmm. and what they can do to either alter their environment or especially if you're in transition looking for a new opportunity, what do you need to be really looking for in that church? And how do you know if it's there? Wow. That's a hard thing to know sometimes, right? Because yeah. if you say to somebody, hey, I'm somebody who likes to do new things, are right. you open to new things? Well, the church is going to say yes. But we all know you get in there, you try to do something new, and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. So we, I'm actually helping in the coaching process, helping them identify mm -hmm. how do you identify a church that's open to the things that motivate you so that they can interview the church. We always say interview the church when you're looking for a position, but how do you do that? And mm -hmm. so we're helping them look for evidence-based uh, reasons, yeah. rationale for what it is that they're doing. So, so what's the nomination? I'm thinking, how do I get this test? 
Right, right. Well, it, I mean, what it a took setup. Yeah. not a test; it's an assessment. <laughs> assessment. Yeah. It yeah. took yeah. about what would you say, forty-five minutes? For yeah, me to, th- it takes thirty to forty-five. Yeah. for you, forty-five. Yeah, so. <laughs> it was a little slower. I could even <laughs> tell one story. In I, actually, I actually minutes. had to yes. think a little deeper <laughs> uh, than probably what you're used story. to. Right. And so uh, the idea, I think, kind of the hand and glove is once you know your motivation, what motivates you to find that environment that will sink. Mm-hmm. Sync with you. And Does for that, anybody it, ever get the answer that cold hard cash is the motivation? Does that ever come up? <laughs> uh, no. Well, I mean, that's the, just to be kidding. honest. Don't honest. That. Money that's can be a, a subject, question. but these things go deeper. These things go to actually what fulfills you. And I believe that these motivations. And this has been developed over fifty years with SEMA, the oh. System for Identifying oh. Motivation Ability, Motivated Abilities. Um, uh, they've identified twenty seven core motivations that people have. Um, and it's really, it's really That's eye-opening and illuminating. And the best part is you don't just take the assessment and get a report back. You also get 90 minutes with a coach hmm. to walk you through it. Because to be honest, most assessments by themselves give you a little bit of insight, but yeah. it's when you actually get to talk through it with somebody and understand it that it makes sense. Because these motivations don't put you in a box. Oh, you're this person or you're this yeah. person. Good. These themes work together to right. create a unique print. And I believe these things that we're motivated to do, that's how we're motivated to reveal God. Mm. Yeah. And so it's part of how we experience the identity of God in, in, in our lives. So it's been, yeah. I mean, it's been wow. so much fun yeah. to work with these um, it, it ministers. It blew me on. away. It actually blew me away. I, I remember coming back. Kathy just walked in the, the studio. Hey. I, I, hey, I was, Hi. But I, well, it was one of those things that we did it so fast that when she was like, okay, so what are your primary motivations? Like, Wow, we talked about a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So many well, things because he's going to send me and, some stuff, and, and that's the thing because it's not just about these. It's not just about the the, the labels on it. It's really about yeah. getting deeper into the surface and yeah. looking at it in light of these stories. So, like for instance, Doug, one of his core motivations is to meet needs. Okay, so that and, and it makes sense when you think about it, right? Even looking at something like DYN, a purpose driven, the fact that you've shared everything that you've ever created in youth ministry with others, you know, you're wanting to meet needs and you're you're very practical with your stuff. Your stuff isn't theoretical. It's not high-minded thinking. It's like, I can use this stuff now because yeah. you're motivated to meet needs. Now, that doesn't mean I'm, now I don't have that as one of my top motivations. Yeah. That doesn't mean that I don't meet people's needs. I'm gonna do it in a different way, but your payoff is actually meeting the need. Like yeah. when you see somebody's need met, boom, that, that does it for you. Yeah. Or... Now, me, my one of my core motivations is explore. Okay, and this is a dangerous motivation to have because I get paid. I get a payoff just from exploring things. I don't yeah. have to do anything practical with it. I don't have to yeah. create a product out of it, yeah. to hand it off to anybody. Just the act of exploration. Mm-hmm. Now, if I can get myself in the right environment, and it's that's how I even came to right. doing this wise coaching thing is I'm exploring. So personality, what drives us, how do we yeah. help solve some of these problems that youth ministers continue to have? Yeah. And, um, and in that exploration process, I find something that meets needs. Mm-hmm. You know, now I hand it off to somebody else that can maybe, you know, yeah. finish it or, or leverage it to that point. Yeah. So these motivations kind of get to, to why we do it. It's pretty cool. It's great. It fun. So you guys provide the coach? Yes. Like, so you, you would take it and then the coach is like someone you would recommend. Like yeah. Grant Bird. Do you remember Grant Bird? Yeah. 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 Old PD-Lime. time PDYM. Big old go yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy had been doing youth ministry for as long as me. 30, 30 years. Six. You know. Yeah. And so he's yeah. he's one of the coaches. Yep. Gotcha. Seasoned, skilled guy who's been trained in that. Yep. They would then meet with the person either on the phone or face to face. We have men kind of and women. We have people from all different denominations um, in different environments, so that you can, you know, really we cool. can we can help find somebody that's going to understand your context. Yeah. So you're still figuring best. this thing out. Is there like a cost? Have you figured out? Yeah. That yet? Yeah. What's yeah. it? What's yeah, it? it? One thousand four hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, that's the beautiful thing is that we've been able to. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of components involved sure, in sure. this, um, and uh, but the. The retail on 129 is what wow. we, we we're having to do, but excellent. we're we're mm-hmm. gonna launch it below below 100 bucks wow. so that people can yeah. really get in yeah. and, yeah. and, and experience it. We I mean just we're trying to get 45 it as cheap. minutes with somebody. Yeah, we're trying to get that, it as yeah, low as we possibly can, position. and you know these say, these coaches or youth ministers are want to give their time. Yeah. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah. It's great because it cost. I mean, because you've grouped with SEMA, it costs you every time you do yeah, it. Yeah, Pruvia so. is actually the group that, that does the yeah. MCOR. And, yeah. and the people that are Pruvia are people that did Strength Steve, Finders, Steve that Yo. did Prepare and Rich. Wow. So yeah. some different assessments that it's you know. But we kind of have an exclusive relationship with them on doing this in the youth ministry. Okay, so are you teasing us or is it available? 
Yeah, it's available. It yeah, you oh, can go to, go to go to NYWC. To yep, and you can uh, you can sign up in nice. NYWC. I mean, I'm sorry, youspecialties.com. Oh, okay. Yeah, Just go to youspecialties.com. Why is coaching? <laughs> and um, and the coaches will be at the conventions at NYWC mm -hmm. this uh, fall to kind of work with people. That's what made you say NYWC. That. It is what hey, made right. me. Speaking of NYWC, we're going to do a podcast in Sacramento, and many of our people will be there but yeah right now the what about what about atlanta can't you mm. make that happen wait, wait. did you I get turned down and put them on the spot atlanta? yeah huh? <laughs> did i didn't get did, didn't get turned down oh. haven't asked yet yeah, i'm asking the you. boss oh sure we can work it out yeah <laughs> <laughs> wait, say that a little louder oh, oh gosh <laughs> I'm yeah. sure we can work yeah. it out. Drop in my, uh, drop in my answer later. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure we can figure it out. Yeah. Just, you need to check with your people. That's what's yeah. always One, safe. Just a few. He just, just explores. Someone yeah. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'd like to explore yeah. that option. Yeah. This is why you need the, the right, the right mix. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the other things, if I can add this. Okay. Um, <laughs> no more additions. So we have the coaching thing, but here's the other cool part. So, um, so Brian Abbey, who uh, used to lead uh, Youth Mark, still does lead Youth Mark, um, but he's joined the YS team to head up um, uh, something called YS Search. And Doug, you and I have always talked mm -hmm. about one of the last frontiers of youth ministry is mm -hmm. helping churches. Fly so with right. this coaching thing, what we're doing now is going in and churches that are looking for a youth pastor. Which we get, I get an email every day. Yep. Every day. I got one yep. yesterday. And so we've, that, we've, we've figured out a low-cost way to help churches do this, and it uses the M Core and this coaching thing. So now, oh, as brilliant. we're coaching youth pastors, we're being able to find out what they're looking for. A church comes and yeah. says, like hey, here's who we are. We are like e-harmony like e like e e e e for, for, for youth ministry. Yeah. 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 E-harmony. Sorry. <laughs> Bingo. But, but the assessment just wow. gives insight. It doesn't, you know. What's her motivation if she doesn't like to be touched on the shoulder? <laughs> yeah. She doesn't like That's to be touched on the shoulder. Do you not like to be touched? Oh. I love that. No. Okay, because this kind of sounds like we You're didn't You're becoming set, as red as your hibiscus. I know, seriously. We didn't totally set this red. up ahead of time, but it's no. feeling a little bit like a, a Yeah, YS, it's a total infomercial. Uh, infomercial. But the excitement <laughs> level of putting a youth worker in a church that actually wants him or her yeah, is unbelievable. Cool. And I've told I've told all you guys, I think that is the thing that if somebody wants to break new ground in the youth ministry world, that is the nut that hasn't been cracked yet. It mm -hmm. is getting people not just to say yes to a job, but yes to a job where they, they fit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. well, we, I'm thrilled. We're piloting it in, in four churches, and we're, we're taking the whole thing live. And That's we great. We redid our job board. So is it under $100 on the website right now? So I can, get, I can take that test, and I can line get up with coached. a coach. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's great. That's cool. Yeah. That's Unbelievable. Great news. We'll get you all set up. Great. Yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe we ought to even give a better discount to DYM members. Mm -hmm. We can talk about that later. <laughs> we'll, we'll, add, oh. we'll add that to the we'll add that to the the list of things. What is we really value your presence? It's an infomercial. These people are going. We're we we we're we're dialing in here to get help. You know the answers to our questions. All you guys are doing is negotiating stuff. No, that's I mean. Honestly, for us to know this yeah. it's good here, push. you know, we get questions like this all the time. And, and to know what your primary motivation is and at that type of affordable cost, talk about meeting needs. That will yeah. be that will be great. Um, Jeff Boos writes in, he says, almost three years ago, I was in a very dark and painful place. I sent you an email. The fact that you took time to personally respond meant a lot. Hmm. You also, with my permission, posted that email on the blog and asked, asked the community of youth workers to chime in. I shared the responses with my wife. We were both in tears at the outpouring of love. Mm -hmm. Many of the youth pastors gave me their email addresses and phone numbers and told me I could contact them. Mm -hmm. I reached out to them. Danny Bowers and I have developed a pretty good friendship over the years through phone calls and emails. I stayed where I was for another two years after that email before I finally resigned. Since then, I've moved back to my home state of Illinois, and I'm in a healthy place in my life, both personally and ministry. I used the name Jordan in the first email because I didn't want you to use my name. It's okay for you to use my real name now. I just want to write and say thank you to you, the rest of the DYM team and family. I'm on the road to healing. You were a big part of it. Thank you for genuinely loving youth workers. Notice that I made sure to spell a lot correctly. And uh, That's good. I How thought do you spell a lot again? Two words. Oh. 
Oh, you but, guys get that too? It wasn't just me. Yeah. Okay. He does that all the time. Okay, this is like a thing. This is a Doug thing. Well, okay. it's, yeah. it's called grammar. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's, it's a primary it's motivation. For, yeah, that is your I'm a speaker, not a writer. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but I thought that, you know, that is... Grammar's worth As I was reading through these emails, I mean, there yes. is a... Um, a virtual community that obviously is happening, Mark. You know, one of the things that I've told you about the, you know, the web show is that for many people that don't have a staff, this is their mm-hmm. their staff meeting, mm-hmm. and uh, I just love that. I Plus, was in Cincinnati I, yesterday, and people were ta- ta- saying, "Hey, thank you for sponsoring oh. the oh, DSM wow. show and all that." Yeah, oh, yeah that's great. Yeah. Cool. A, a lot of people that just like most staff meetings, no work gets done. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, oh, that's nervous, not true. Nervous laugh. This is from Aaron's ear. Anyway, um, for for this, Jeff Boos, way to go. But also, way to go the the, the community that I remember that I remember I he, mean, was I remember the he was hurt. He was hurt. Well, what I remember? said is it was one of those things where I went. There's been a few times throughout the several years we've done yeah. this where, you know what, the community can care for you more than we can right now. Yeah. And so I put it on my We're blog. Harmless. And people responded to him. Mm. And Danny Bowers, which is a youth worker who was Local actually down the street, total. who moved to St. Louis. Um, oh. Yeah, he's gone. I saw him two days ago in Chicago. Oh, that's um, awesome. At a conference. So, anyway, these guys just poured in and started loving on one another. I oh. love that. I just that's love great. that. St. Louis. Um, this is from Aaron Zier from Eureka, Illinois. I'm a DYM member. I also am an original Zero Zero listener. Oh, you all began the podcast a couple months before my very first youth ministry internship. I can remember oh. setting up chairs for events while listening to the wisdom of Doug, Matt, Josh, and Natalie. I've been oh. listening to you for my entire eight years of youth ministry. We take this time to oh. apologize to you right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 How many Seriously. hours of that is? How many days and months of your life has been wasted? Mark, not enough. <laughs> Mark, you not don't realize enough. some people are actually. Do you know what a rewinder is? For I, I do. I've met these people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. there's now double rewinders that like are going back and listening wow. to the show two times. But the, that was one guy who was a trucker. No, there's several there's more guys. than one guy are coming oh, okay. on saying. Remember the guy that was mowing his lawn. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's a serious it's acreage. It's a good show. Yeah. Most of them actually get hurt because of Matt's cackle. And there's actually there's some in here that right. like people fall off treadmills and stuff. Um, It'll be mentally tough. Not sure what I'll do that when you hurt. guys call it quits. Probably have to rely more on the Holy Spirit for guidance. I guess. <laughs> um, so here's my question. I was wondering if you have any suggestions on ways to encourage and equip students to read the Bible outside of church settings. Oh. We've tried different approaches through the years with varying success. We currently pass out a monthly Bible reading plan, and I've done some teaching in the past on how to read the Bible, but I still would like to see more students engaging with God's Word on their own. Any thoughts that you would have? Thanks for the last eight years of laughs and wisdom. It's a good question. How do we get... I love that he uses the word on their own because that is so key to... (coughs) Kind of our culture and our our world of DYM mm-hmm. um, is getting kids to read on their own. So when they graduate, they don't graduate from their faith. Right. But what are some what are some thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think that that um, one of the things that you talked about in um, in PDYM and conferences and all that stuff is that really the more you're asking out of somebody, you know, when you ask a lot, you're going to get less people. And so if you have pizza and free food and games, you're going to have a ton of people show up. You know, weekend, you'll have probably less. But this, my point of bringing that up, is that asking people to read the Bible on their own, that's a, not a lot of people are going to do that. I mean, you can hit it every week. You can encourage it. You I can, don't do it still. So, well, my you know, we didn't want to bring that me. up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Got a new you're app for you. the MCOR, which is important. <laughs> yeah, so as long as so. There's a verse in there. But, I mean, I think that's that's one of those things where it's, it's uh, if you're going to disciple other people, if you're going to disciple students, you're going to disciple other people. There is always a level of discouragement um, in that people are just not going to rise to the challenge all the time. And that, to me, is being being able to get over that is really an important. It's really an important thing, you know. I mean, I've I've met youth workers before that you know kind of fed up with their students, and they're like, I just want to lead a group of of kids that want to be discipled, and it's like. Well, that's fantastic. You know, you'll probably have to wait until you're in heaven or something. I mean, that's just doesn't doesn't exist. I don't. I don't okay, think. so you're not really giving any practical idea other, other than just the fact yeah. other yeah. than just the fact that yeah. it's discouraging. Way to Take go! Hope. Way to go yeah. to hold up the high yeah. standard. The fact that you even want that for your kids is is yes. great. You're going to be disappointed. Great. 
for me, the goal is to have not have students reading the word, but have it hidden in their heart. Yeah. Um, and so that it becomes a, 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 an active part of how they think and live and act and operate. And, um, and, and obviously reading it is a connected to that, but it's not the end goal. And um, one of the things I really love about um, the work that Michael Novelli has done on Bible storing is recognizing that we're in a post-literate um, culture where we're kind of entering a new orality mm -hmm. kind of a phase of, 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 of thinking with, with, with students. You have such um, great vocab. Oh, thanks. I you like really to just do. drop it every now yeah, and then. It's totally. impressive. Orality. Yeah. Use before we... Salinity. Salinity. Yeah. Do you know what salinity yeah. is? No. It, it's it sounds, salt. But basically salt what you're saying is people don't yeah. read, wow. they talk. Sorry. Is that what you're saying? They, they, well, they do, but there's just a different way of engaging text. It's Post not that yeah. text is dead. It's just that we're beyond it. And, and, and so... Um, so what, what Michael has done, Novelli has done with Echo the Story, which is a, something that Sparkhouse puts out, um, is you, it's, a, it's a way that you engage the word in a story base using chronological Bible story, which is really hot right now on the mission field in terms of how they're introducing yeah. the word of God into um, cultures for the very first time. Um, and so uh, he's taken this and applied it to youth ministry, and it's really phenomenal stuff because it really helps students hide the story of God in their heart and helps them learn how to interact and engage the text. And what I've, this is what I love about the program that he's put together is that to me, if I were a non-believer, it would introduce me to the story of God for the very first time. If I was somebody who was a, a new believer, I'm, I'm just as interested in the way that you go about doing it. It's very interactive, very experiential. Yep. So I think it, it helps build rhythms that would naturally lead to Bible discovery and, and searching, you know, away from that. But he talks about the fact that we're always looking at application of the word of God. He talks about storing being about implication where it binds you to the message that's in scripture. So it, it's worth looking at. He's got a book that we published mm -hmm. that's now, he's now taken off on his own, but it's uh, called Shaped by the Story. Mm -hmm. And then Echo the Story uh, is the curriculum that he's developed. So Great. those would be awesome. some practical. What, am, what about you, ladies? What do you do with junior high kids? Well, I think, you know, in junior high especially, I, I think it's good to start with some questions, of, you know, either to your student. I mean, maybe in asking some of your students, you know, what about the Bible, you know, is intimidating? What, you know, why don't you read it or why isn't mm -hmm. it? Why are you, do you feel disconnected to it? I mean, the deeper we fall in love with Jesus and the more that we know him, the more that we want to be immersed in the word. So I think for junior hires, they're really figuring out, uh, you know, their relationship with Jesus and who he is and, and, and really figuring out how to love him. So it's not something I emphasize, obviously I emphasize reading the Bible, but it isn't, for junior hires, they're in such a discovery place that, you know, really they have to discover Christ before, you know, they the kind of, for the word. yeah, before they have that desire. Mm. So I don't mm. see that desire other than when parents tell me their kids have a desire, which always cracks me up, you know, like my kid has a desire, but then, you know, I'm like, really? You know, it's just kind of an interesting thing, but... I think they they aren't necessarily some can get to that place but I think they're kind of in that discovery place so really even helping them how are you helping them not just know about Jesus but know Jesus and have their own personal relationship with him, with him and really I think the more they fall in love with him the more they're going to kind of desire and hunger that so I don't know that that necessarily for her my age group is is the focus of like how do I get them hungry for the word it's just more how do I get them hungry for Jesus because that will be mm. a natural progression mm. so um, but I you, think you give them practical tools like do you use the one minute Bible do you have a New Testament do we you... have yes we have used the one minute Bible before I think it's great I think right now I mean our students most of our students have smartphones and so just utilizing some of the mm -hmm. you know the UVerse apps mm -hmm. and things like that are great Brilliant. for them mm -hmm. really honestly equipping our life group our small group leaders yeah. you know like you were talking about discipleship in the very beginning I mean they're really the ones who are helping students kind of individually individually you know find that hunger and so when there's accountability there with a small group leader or a volunteer in your ministry to me that is a huge piece of helping students get crazy in the bible is having that one-on-one -on -one connection that's like what are you reading or let's read this together and then talk about it really helping them kind of discover god's word together i think is cool so yeah, yeah. I can't remember when the printing press came out. It was like 1450 or 1425. Absolutely. So, so we right. haven't had a printed Bible that people could own themselves. Somebody Google that because I think it's more new. than 1600s than 14. Let's see how smart he is. I'm going to say 1689. <laughs>
What do you you said fourteen hundred? Well, is it fourteen twenty five? I was a little more specific. No, it's fifteen thirty four. So, huh? I think it's in the fourteen hundred. Really? Well, yeah, let's see. So, yeah. Kathy Field. Fourteen thirty nine. Dang. Yeah. Ooh, I see. I said fourteen twenty five, fourteen fifty. Woo! Middle, middle. No. That's so smart. I was gonna say, trust the vocab. Trust, trust the vocab. The vocab. Yeah. Totally. Wins. I'm a Bible translation guy, so you know the story of scriptures. You know, but, I have a thought. But I think okay. it's a, I think it's important to, to realize this is a new idea. Really, it's a fresh idea that people actually have Bible in their own hands. It's not well, six hundred years fresh. Yeah, but that's that's pretty, fresh. pretty revolutionary. Yeah. Well, I think too that um, going really practical. You know, growing up with youth group. And doing a youth group with you, Doug. I'm sorry if Go that ahead. was mean. I wasn't trying to be mean. I just mean. got Don't. the look like I was no. being a jerk. No, when you consider really that the world is 12,000 years old. Right. Right. Just, He's become right. a lot sweeter over the years. Matt, you're Don't so you sensitive. I feel you bad. Intense. I don't want to be sensitive. He's not people. that big a deal. It's just, well, I got the look. just the president of Youth Specialties that sponsors our web show. Mock him all you want. It's all right. Treasured guest. No, no. If that was mean, I'd not care about anybody else. All right. Yeah. Megan, I'm, go. I'm an easy target go. Yeah. for Come mockery. On. Well, that one of the gross. things, well, it's all right. Oh. Well, Megan. Here's my thought. Okay, thank you. Um, I was thinking of how adults today, we, you know, the Sarah Young devotional Jesus Calling has is just sold so many, many thousands yeah. of copies because it's a bite-sized deal. And, I, and I'm thinking, kids don't have something that's this bite-sized, quick, that's that's the environment, that's the yeah. culture. Really. One-minute so, Bible. So I was thinking about, I was actually thinking about the one-minute Bible, but I was also thinking about how, quick example, I went to hot yoga, which is like doing Gumby oh. in hell, but I remember doing this, and on the wall when I walk in there, Gumby, twist your body, it's yeah. hot, it's yeah. horrible. Yoga, yeah. it's, it's, I don't know if there's clay involved or what. I heard yoga is too hard. Like, okay. it's, yeah. It might be. Anyhow, but on the wall question. walking in was um, was this chart of a 15-day challenge and a 30-day challenge, and the goal was to go every single day and mark your you know put a little X yeah. near your name. You know what you understand challenge, and it just got me thinking about this question, which is a great question of what if there was a 15-day challenge in our youth groups or a 30-day challenge in our youth groups, and the names were on a wall and. I mean, there's some kind of fun competition. They love fun. They love comp yeah. a lot of students like competition. And the goal is, I hide God's word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So, so they pick out a scripture verse, and I think Katie, your idea of putting it on a text or you know some kind of app every day. Here's your verse for the day. Yeah. That there's literally a verse that everybody is on the same page about, and they're just all you have to do is read it and ask God, what does this mean for me today? Yeah. Yeah, so there's good. a first and a follow-up question. Good. We, you know, one of the realities of, of just leadership is that what we want our kids to embrace, we have to live out. Mm -hmm. So as leaders, as teachers, when we are talking with such affection of God's word that, you know, Psalm 119.11, I have hidden God's word in my heart that mm -hmm. I might not sin against you, that we continually in our teaching mm -hmm. is that, you know, we don't have to do it pious where I got it yeah. before before everybody and I read the, you know, yeah. Here's the but we're excited about God's word in our life. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we talk to kids about following Jesus, then let's at least introductory point them to Jesus mm -hmm. and the stories of Jesus mm -hmm. and get them excited about the person and the teachings of Jesus, as opposed to saying, you know, you've been confirmed, you've been baptized, welcome to the faith, here's a Bible. Right. And they read Genesis, you know, I mean, most of us Sorry. in here have read Genesis more than any book in the Bible because we're we're always starting <laughs> at the 1st. beginning <laughs> and maybe what we need to do is we need to point them I love the fact that he talked about a, a reading plan a, uh, a doable reading plan I mean that's what I do love about the one, one minute, minute Bible. Bible it's not guilt producing it's not three chapters a day it's sit by the toilet you know just the idea of developing that habit of hiding God's word in your heart I also think that you said it kind of under your breath and I think it's a valuable deal especially with my own kids sitting here is the small group leader you know, I can remember mm -hmm. Kathy and I talking about wanting God's word in our kids' lives. When Tori, uh, who's now 25, when she was in junior high, I can remember one time going into her room and all of a sudden seeing the Bible and a journal by the side of her bed. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't because mom and dad were telling her about it. It was her small group leader. Yeah. You know, it was Allison mm -hmm. who had emphasized that, who had talked to the girls about that. And all of a sudden, you know, it didn't matter whether she heard it from mom and dad or saw it in mom and dad yeah. or in youth group, it was that small group leader saying, hey, let's read this together. Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes we teach in the, you know, big, yeah. those principles kind of come and go. But all of a sudden when you're in a small group and say, hey, you know what, this week, let's read John 5 together. This really weird thing happens at the pool. I'm going to talk to you about it next week, you know, and so give them those specific ideas yeah. to yeah. do it. 
I like Proverbs um, because they're very practical mm -hmm. and they, they have application. And I think when students realize that the Bible actually helps them yeah, uh, and helps them understand life, you know, then yeah. they're drawn to it. Yep. And sometimes, I, you know, I remember my friend Jason, I mean, he started, you know, he's a new Christian, starts in Genesis, reading through, gets stuck in Deuteronomy, yeah. you know, and just yeah. having oh, someone help direct him book. to some places to, to develop a love and a thirst for, for what's there. There's so much there, you know. Yeah. It's you good love stuff. Deuteronomy, you love. Did you write yeah, a study I on mean, that? I mean, numbers. I could see somebody getting stuck there. I can <laughs> see Deuteronomy. everybody yeah, getting stuck on. in Leviticus. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 Fifth so. animal sacrifice with the tail with the ninth high priest. Hey, but I know we're moving on, but. Let's move on. Can I say one thing? Yeah, let's <laughs> move on. <laughs> Parker. <laughs> Parker, I didn't, didn't even start the clock, year old idea although I thought I did. So, would you let me know where we're at? It was chained to the pole, but you couldn't get what you couldn't take it. give a good time Okay, that's right. We didn't time it? I didn't. I thought I hit. I thought I hit start, but I didn't. Because yeah. according so, to your, we're eight beautiful. minutes. No, that's ten seconds. Ten seconds. Oh. <laughs> I just restarted it. <laughs> so we started over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. Hey. Did you add your one thing? No. Do it. You, but here's what I'll say: is we got to move on. Part of the <laughs> I knew that was coming. So I'm just a motor. But part of the relationships and the repeating stuff, living it out, like what um, one way that that looks practical is in the Bible study that I would teach at my house, like. I would start by saying, hey, did anybody read, in your time with God this week, did anybody read something that you got questions about mm. or do you want to tell everybody mm. about? And there was nobody. I mean, no one would say something the first week, the second week, the third week, but I still would do it and I still would say, hey, this is great that we're here to talk about God's word and this is fabulous. This is what we're going to do for the next 40 or whatever. But you should be reading on your own. You will discover things you know, does anybody have any questions this week? Did anybody find anything? And so, you know, eventually we got to the point. I mean, I would even say, I don't even care about our study tonight. We can throw the study away and just spend the whole night talking about what you read. And, you know, and we actually, we get to the point where some weeks we spent 30, 40 minutes just talking about what, what different people read. So that was a way that we repeated it. That's good. I love that. Hey, um, we have other sponsors, not primary sponsors like you specialties, yeah. but secondary, more slacker sponsors kind of can we say that <laughs> no they're not crappy they're just they just we don't pay as much um but um uh, good people <clears throat> no, I know. youth I mean, ministry 360 if you would like um anything with a discount uh they get 10 percent off if you use code dym2014 go to their youth ministry 360 store they have a whole thing on uh, new believers it's great devotionals Four week experience for new believers. This guy's we, great. We've they been have a new Jesus study. That's a big deal. They just what they want us to oh. talk about is their new believers. Yeah, Dang. but I'm sure they'd be happy with the new <laughs> Jesus study. We all like I Jesus. just can't yeah. get anything Throw it right today. No, that's that's <laughs> great. And uh, Leader Trex, who are big partners with DYM, they have if you use the code DYM, you get 17 percent off. Wow. <laughs> and I don't know why 17. Why 17? I'm sure they have. But they some have calculations. They have that great done. great stuff. <laughs> Somebody built an Excel yeah. sheet. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> There's an Excel sheet somewhere. <laughs> Let's bump it up. No, I think it was 15%. <laughs> we we kind of made fun of them like, hey, how about, yeah, you know, we were given like 20%. Something. We can I, afford we do. to do 20. No, not 20. <laughs> 15. <laughs> we can do better than 15. 15. <laughs> Leadertracks.com. We just had a great conversation. Leadertracks has got some great stuff. No, they got amazing out. stuff. I was, yeah. I was nice. actually just telling Mark that Doug Franklin came to um, our master's class at APU last week and, yeah. and mm -hmm. taught, and people loved him. Maybe it's, this is the 17th anniversary of Leader Trek. He is great. Mark's trying to figure it out. Mm. Oh, what in the world? Would you call him out and find out what's up? All right, Megan. Yes, sir. You got to mellow out. Oh. What? What are you talking <laughs> about? I haven't said anything. Just, I've been incredibly sub subdued. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Okay, you you take the Do lead on. Do you like my word subdued? You take subdued. the lead on this one, right? You're going to start. Okay. Matt normally starts because he feels like, I'm the one who has wisdom. I know. Uh, I remember my last podcast. No, when I, I don't like, say anything, you're like, first. okay, Matt, start. You just I mean, always it's... have an immediate response to everything. Is that called a get, then? Yeah, basically. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> hey, gang, Doug, Katie, Josh, Matt, Parker, Seth, and my friend, Fadi. Oh, uh, oh, where is our friend Fadi? Yeah. yeah. This is peeked you, into a window. This is from Dave Campbell, who's uh, Oak Hills Baptist Church. Yeah. says, I got to say, since Mish came on the show and was playing Kissy Face with Matt, 
I feel like it's only fair that you invite Ron on the show too, mm. since Katie loves. <laughs> <laughs> he would not say would never. Since Katie loves extra attention. You could be like totally. Ron. You could own the Millennium oh, yeah. Falcon. The two and us. touch but. on the shoulder. Yeah. I'm a DYM member. Just feel like I have to say that because everyone who writes into the show says that. Pretty soon, okay. that uh, saying that you're a DYM member is going to be like saying you just got rid of your landline phone at home. Yeah, duh, everyone did. Uh, what do you want? A free "Sorry You Got Can" T-shirt? All right, so here we go, Dave. I have. No, they were all actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I have the privilege of serving as an adjunct professor at a local Christian university. Apparently, not one that you want to name. And once a year, I teach a class called Intro to Youth Ministry. I'd love to hear some thoughts on what young youth workers. Young people. Most need to know. I have my own ideas, but I'm curious what wisdom you would have to share. I'm 29 years old, so I feel like I am still young in youth ministry, and I've learned a ton through teaching this class. I have the students read PDYM. Okay. And why should there be... Any other? Th- why is there? Why do we yeah. even answer this question? Yeah. Um, uh, why would you even write? What about your first two years? First you got a whole no, he wrote uh, PDYM, Hurt 2.0, and a few of Duffy Robbins' books. Well, so one of yours, one of Chaps, and a few. Well, <laughs> like a <laughs> plethora. Cool. If probably. you're gonna read several, if it takes he a few. Would be the person. It takes a few of Duffy's books to <laughs> kind of equal Hurt. Um, I'm having my students watch three episodes of the DYM web show and write a response. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, that is beautiful. I'll let you know what they like have to say. I would like to read say. those responses. Yeah. Matt, yeah. thanks for being the star of the show for making me fall off the treadmill last week at the gym when you laughed, scared really the crap happen. out of me. Note to self, turn volume Skin down. Burn. <laughs> I okay, funny. let's go hurts. quick, because I let's make this transferable, not just to a guy teaching a youth ministry class, but for those who are yes. leading youth ministry, what do we think young youth workers need to know? Short, yeah. you want to start? Sure. Okay. Um, Dave, great question, and I think it's applicable to a lot of, a lot of churches, like you said. I think about when I first started youth ministry myself, um, I had a great example, and I had a really horrible example. And let me start with a bad one. The bad one came from a leader who poured into students. Um, The good one came into the leader, came from the leader, and I'm sitting near him, who poured into the volunteers. And trained volunteers primarily, that was the focus. Love students, I mean, he's a shepherd, Doug's a shepherd, but the example, the first example, which was the bad one, was um, great at teaching on a Sunday, um, fairly good shepherd, but did not empower parents and volunteers at all. And as a result, the youth ministry didn't grow because not any one person can build their ministry. So um, so the best example, I would say, start with volunteers and make sure you have healthy volunteers, do background checks, ask them detailed questions about their own background to make sure they're healthy and aware. Awareness is big. If they have pain, make sure you talk about their pain and make sure they're being it's being used for God's kingdom. And... Um, and have fun with them. Gosh, we had so much fun. We had youth leader meetings that Katie would run <laughs> with some crazy theme uh, every single month. And we could not wait to go to those meetings. They were fun. They were short. They were um, meaningful. And um, and we always walked away relational. with a nugget. Very yeah. relational. Yep. So I'd say start with your volunteers. And it helped you win as a youth leader. I think I won yeah. as a youth leader. I mean, because of the meeting. Right. The meeting, like, helped you. Absolutely. You were there because it helped you do better. Well, I, I like it. Think you know, so you wrote a book called Refuel. Mm-hmm. It, like refuel as a volunteer, um, our volunteer pool. It would refuel the people in the room. Yeah. We wanted to actually show up. So. Okay, good, excellent. That's one. That's, That's awesome. One. Now, like, you got one. Mm-hmm. One kind of two. Though. You know, I, I, I skip. Yeah. Skip. Okay, skip. Katie. Skip. I would say um, <clears throat> for a new youth worker, or if you're just starting out, how to doing some time on how to dream, how to create vision, how to um, be intentional with how you set your youth ministry up. I think that's something that I got training on way later in ministry. And and actually, it's really fun and enjoyable to think about how we're thoughtful and intentional about what we do with parents, with leaders, with students. You know, really just thinking of helping people think big picture. It's not natural for everyone. So for people that it's not natural for, helping them to kind of unlock that side of themselves and be big picture. For those people who are big picture, how are they intentional about executing? Mm. I think that's you know, a a really important piece of the puzzle. I also would say training on how to refresh your soul and how to pause, how to step back. Um, I think as a younger youth worker, again, I didn't have a ton of that early on. And so I think that is a huge thing. Uh, You know, learn to 
fig, you know, take time with the Lord and how to incorporate that in a really busy ministry schedule. I think that's a really big one too. And of course, volunteers, I would start with that. Mm-hmm. So that's a great one. That was a lot. Sorry. I turned no, 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 no. There's a lot of good stuff. And I think those are things that are probably more important than what I'm going to say. Um, but should we move on then? Yeah. Okay. No, I think if you're te- if I'm teaching a class and you have you know extended time to go over multiple things and uh, you know I would for sure hit something about thinking strategically like being able to hit pause on your ministry where you're not going from thing to thing to thing and conversation to conversation and 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 um, conflict and all that stuff where ministry never stops that you would um, that you would teach the students you learn how to pause and go okay what is the big picture of the ministry where do i want to go uh you know do i have to create a five-year plan and submit it to the elder board no i'm not necessarily saying that or have something complex or or um really really confusing but something that's helpful for you to say you know what this is what our ministry is about and for this next season for this next year or three months this is what it looks like going after that and um and you make it practical you make it practical. I think part of part of thinking strategically is that um, you can't really do that much new stuff, which bums out an <laughs> explorer type person. But I mean, really, a lot of ministry is getting some of those core things going, and you keep doing the. Core this is things. why knowing your motivation and matching to yeah. a church is really important. Because mm-hmm. if yeah. you are an explorer person, you're going into a church that needs more organization. Or to keep things the yeah. same, you're yeah. up a creek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. so it's 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 one of those things that if you if you don't have your eye on the big picture, you're only going to be managed by your opportunities and your crises and the loudest complainer mm-hmm. and that yeah. squeaky wheel. So, I'd say that's important <clears throat> to, to teach someone how to think strategically. Not that they need to go and learn, you know, this complex business models for analyzing, but. So what is the big picture? How are we going to make that happen? Determining your big win. When, when Matt gets serious, he gets silent, and we've had some people complain. Was I quiet that time? Yeah, you go quiet. Well, you, you, here's what, here's what kind of people do is when Matt talks, <laughs> yes. they turn it up. <laughs> right. And then when he squawks, it's so loud. Yeah. That, right. You know, you know, well, but, if you so, don't want it, you don't have to listen. I, Maybe you got to work for it. Like, I, I think, don't know what the deal is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you work for yeah, it. Yeah. It, it. Well, it says it's one of those indicators that this is important. It's time to listen. Yeah. We've actually thought about if we could get YS to... To be a little bit more of a primary sponsor, we could, we could probably get microphones for <laughs> The oh, name yeah. of this show is We're Leverage. so glad you're here today. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not coming back ever. This is costing hey, so much. Here's the deal. Um, on the primary, on the level of, of teaching a college class and taking the transferable to young youth workers, one, you know, college class oftentimes is, you know, having taught college youth ministry classes, it's pearls before swine. They're not ready for it mm. in some ways. Oh, focus on the swine part. <laughs> is uh, but you know at a master's Seriously. at a master's level now yeah. all of a sudden they've uh-huh. got some they've got some sense, you know right? well at, well, I'm looking at they Tori got some stake in it. Tori's Tori's three He's years in into full time ministry she's going to listen differently now mm. as a veteran as a three year veteran youth worker than if she was at Biola taking a youth ministry class it's right. just yes. a different context yeah. but with PDYM because it has these nine foundations that are leadership development, that are strategy and parents, process and yeah. parents mm-hmm. and all that type of stuff. I think all of those, you could take those and just parse them out and teach them for a long time. The two things I didn't write in PDYM strategically was uh, culture, because it changes mm-hmm. every mm-hmm. every year, and adolescent development, because it changes every year. So I would throw in things like, like that that are mm-hmm. part of, you know, youth workers need to understand how do we discern culture, how do we embrace culture, how well, do we you teach don't culture. Need culture. <laughs> development yeah. for sure though no. I'm, I'm yeah. all about that so you're that with right me now. on the culture your chapter on cordless oh. phones I, I mean, and ColecoVision was inspiring no. <laughs> ColecoVision Converse yeah. 64 that's no, funny the I think culture progress. there's a piece of culture Someday, that's important computers will have you 16k have to talk about RAM it a bit. yeah you're right this will be you a threat to, to our teenagers existence <laughs> you do all right that's plenty that's here we go this is from Joey Wostman Wostman question to you all how would you address the issue of a college freshman who is in your ministry now Twitter stalking a celebrity? What? Excessive <laughs> tweeting. Wow. I don't even know what that means. 
<laughs> well, just listen. It's okay. gonna That's explain. why you should be doing culture things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter is this thing on the internet. Hang on a second. Oh, Thanks. there's a chapter on this. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Where's Twitter stalking? No, that would be too. Hey, which fun? Are the they big, Twitter stalking? Yeah, did you share the big news? Taco about salad the font? Hey, back? did you know that? What's Taco salad back? font is coming back. Coming back. Yeah. This is. And, yeah. and, and the worst part is we just Cut reprinted again. this book with a totally different cover. Which Twitter's you, I, like I, cringing I was, over there. I was there. looking for it. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's a bad font. Okay, our maybe, friend Fadi's back. Maybe we yeah. maybe we sell those. Huh? Okay, focus. Taco, Here we go. I'm more focus. Here we go. Makes you want to eat. College freshman Twitter stalking a celebrity. Excessive tweeting at a tweeting. Tweetiness. Wow. Excessive tweeting at a celebrity making short comedy videos to try to get her attention. Asking others to retweet the videos and tweet her saying he's a good guy. There's even an article out there on the web. Creepy guy tweets, mm. the celebrity's name, 160 times in seven months. Any advice for helping the students see what he's doing is unhealthy? Would you bring the parents into the loop? So now let's do this again. Yeah, sit on. Hang on. Let's, let's make sure that it's transferable to everybody. So let's don't just talk about Twitter stalking let's talk about General what do you more <laughs> what do you what do you do when a kid that you have is put in your group who's now in college or still involved is doing stupid stuff yeah. okay what do you do how do you stay a discipler to that person it's <coughs> a good question i mean it doesn't I don't, we don't have a whole lot of context i'm just curious if they've had if he's had a direct one-on-one -on -one right. conversation with him, you know. So start just, there. Yeah, start with start with a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Yeah, what of, would you say, Katie? Well, I mean, a I'd find out who the celebrity is. I'm dying right now. I know. <laughs> I know. And I totally. want the details. Yeah. I just, well, I have to know. Says says um, the person who was on American Idol yeah, this week. Totally. Yeah, I mean, oh it's, you know, like, we're the Twitter stalker. Yeah, no, totally. So first, um, take the plane. No, it's really, your Katie. Eye. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Uh, no, but I think, you know, with our students, I don't know. There's instead of thinking about the fix first start with a conversation and and find out you know what is the motivation behind it is it yeah. is it playful is it not i mean i think until you have a really honest conversation and kind of know what you're working with you mm. can't really fix it before you know so i would start there i don't know if it's time to bring the parents into the loop yet totally. i mean and if they're in college i'm not sure when you bring the, if you right. even bring the parents into the loop yeah. it's you're doing life training with them so i don't know i would start with a one-on-one -on -one conversation i like that phrase instead mm. of just going to the fix start with the conversation it's great mm. i like that yeah i'm gonna tweet that when well, i go to that, tweet that i go to a celebrity totally. i go start i hear that and i think start with a heart which is so katie i you know you obviously there's what? Or Jesus. Well, yeah, Jesus. Too. Not Jesus, much Katie. Yeah, you know what? They're totally. really innocent. They're really yeah. innocent. But that's the same same idea, right? Just to go. Yeah. There's there's a motivation behind their behavior. I mean, that's that's a little on the psycho side for sure, or, or maybe a lot. So or what? maybe they're just trying to um, get attention for them. So I mean, sometimes yeah. doing this Twitter stalking, it actually gets you to meet celebrities. You get. Yeah. There you is. know. I mean. I mean. Here, here's here's works. Do so. So my 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 wow. my two teenagers, um, they came into their adolescence as the iPhone was being released. So I have a son who's going to be senior, I have a daughter who's a freshman. And so it has been remarkable parenting because mm. we're a generation of parents that have never had to deal with something that was so native to a population. I mean, right. when my son right. was when my son was five, he couldn't understand why he couldn't get Wi-Fi in the backyard. Right. Which you is know, a normal question. Yeah, he came in and said, you know what? He goes, Dad, our, our phones are, are dropping calls. You know, we should get phone. They should make phones on cords. That way you wouldn't have dropped calls. I mean, like he thought this was like, I am well, Alexander Graham. Yeah. Last week. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> last week it came out that two-year-olds can uh, do better accessing information on iPads than writing letters. Yeah. My, yeah. my daughter will stand at the window and touch yeah. things. And I'm like, that's a window, honey. That's not an interactive screen. Yeah, that's they a go treat up to TV. On the other side of that, you should go play on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, a sophomore. I can't pinch and grab. <laughs> she's you know? a sophomore. No, she's no, when she was little, when she was little. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But, 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 this is a, but this is a whole new phenomenon of, of, of how do you deal with this stuff. I mean, even so just recently, uh, as of t this morning, um, my son has been getting uh, uh, kind of um, – Cyber bullied by by this yeah. other kid, yeah. and the, the, I mean my son's not he's not he wasn't threatened by it. I mean this kid's a punk, 
Uh, you know, but I'm I'm more I'm actually you know going I'm more concerned for the student who's doing it. I'm like, why is he obsessing about it? But one of the things that he did he did, he took a picture that I took. Bob Goff gave my son a, a, a copy of his book, signed it for him. And so we're in Nashville after NYWC, and we're in the airport. And my son's reading the book, and I took a picture of it to send to Bob. So it showed up on Twitter. This kid found that picture and then changed the title of the book to How to Date Rape and posted it all over the Internet wow. of my son reading this book. I mean, and, 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 and it gets even worse than the other stuff that this, this, this guy's done. And, you know, having to deal with the stuff, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, it's coming at us from all different angles yeah. on social media. And I don't think we completely know you know what to do in any of these Absolutely. circumstances what makes it worse what is just oh funny haha -ha, or uh, you know we're just you know yeah. messing around with people versus what when are we being really hurtful yeah. and, uh, and and in this kind of a situation i can't i can't tell enough from the context to know is this person you know is yeah. this person doing something that's harmful to themselves to others or are they just being a fan boy, yeah. you know? And stuff. There's a lot I think of there's uncharted two, yeah. stuff there's, with social media. There's yeah. two conversations. I think if you like the person, you approach it one way. If you don't like them, you, you start by saying, no, why is it that you hate yourself so much that you have to do this? And then just see where that goes. But that's only if you don't like him. But if you do like him, uh, I would. And I why would. he is the star of the show. Yeah. yeah. But it's so like, weird that you're not doing youth ministry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Oh. I don't even know. No, no. Even know. That was good, Kate. Um, oh I would only say that to my close friends. But, um, <laughs> but if someone, I mean, first of all, if someone's just right out of high school, I'm not sure that having them as a leader in high school is a good idea. I mean, if they're only one year out, did it say that they're a leader in the ministry? I think he's just a fre freshman no, in college. college freshman. Just a was college freshman. Was in your youth ministry. Was in the youth so ministry. So still connected to him. <laughs> is it affecting their schoolwork? Like, are they, are they, yeah. are they, is the, is the cyber stalking affecting their schoolwork? Is it? But isn't it something yeah. about other kids are looking at it? Well, here's, just all over the I place. think the, part of the issue is, okay. part of being a disciple is that when kids graduate, you don't stop discipling them. Totally. There's still conversations that you have with those people that, hey, I care yeah. about you. I care about your faith. Yeah. I, this. Let me. Let me just. What's help, motivating? Help this? me understand this. this? And, and if me, Jesus uh, were alive today, yeah. w -W he would say, J -J "Out of the <laughs> overflow of the heart, yeah. Yeah. the fingers tweet." <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm tweeting that as soon as we're done with the show. Out of the, Out overflow. Of the overflow of the heart, the fingers tweet. And I think that's where you need to get uh -huh. to is the heart. You know this. What we communicate, you know, yeah. comes out of what's going on in our deepest heart, and um, and we got to figure out what's going on in there. I mean, because obviously it's superficial. If yeah. a lot of time and energy is being spent on this, but um, but I think that's what I'm always looking at. My the things my children are posting, you know, sometimes they'll go like, "We feel like we can't just post whatever we want because you're a minister." And I'm like, "I'm not putting that pressure on you, yeah. you know." But why do you want to post this? You know, that's mm -hmm. more of what I'm interested. in. I don't care yeah. about my reputation. I want to know what's going on in your heart right. that yeah. makes you want to to yeah. tweet this. And I think yeah. that's yeah. I think that's the exploration is, "Hey, help me understand." And most of the time, my conversations with my kids, I either I do either do it right. Where I start or I go wrong, where I mm, blow up. Totally. Yeah. The right way is to say, "Help me understand." Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, I'm new to you realize how understanding what you're trying this. to accomplish. Yeah, help me understand what you're trying yeah. to accomplish or what's going on. What was the context yeah. for this tweet or this thing? Because, yeah. you know, they don't realize how public this stuff is too. Yeah. You know what I mean? They can't and take it back. They can't take it back. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's and a new arm of life that we're teaching that we're working with students, you know, it's, it's a new, it's a new area that we're discipling them in, you know, not only in their friendships and then their relationships and dating relationships in their social media relationships. Mm -hmm. That's just a new arm of coaching that we're figuring out, you know, yeah. how to help them. And the Proverbs speak about reputation a yeah, lot. And totally. there's some good stuff in the scriptures. Yeah. yeah. Purpose driven tweeting. I can see this oh, gosh. already. You, already and, you and Rick. <laughs> last, last one. Okay, last one. And the three of us regulars, yep. we'll, we'll go radio silent on this unless they can't handle this, okay? No pressure. Unless, Matt, you just have wisdom that you have to spout well, out. I don't have to say it. All just right. At the end of it, don't say, Miguel, how come you didn't say it? I won't. No, I won't. James Copeland, Wallace, North Carolina. I've been blown away. What a great resource Download Youth Ministry has been. I'm hooked on the web show like it's Thursday night, must see TV. One complaint <laughs> about watching the web show. You guys have such an amazing relationship. It's made me realize how much I'm missing that in my current situation. Mm. Um, 
it's this is a little bit of a long one, but let, so let me summarize. Good. Um, other than the excitement that he's bringing some kids to student leadership this year in Indiana, which I'm excited about. He's got a dad who's a volunteer, and he's an amazing volunteer. And the guy has discipled, started with seven guys, grew this small group to 16 guys. The dad and the mom are going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it sounds like it's an ugly divorce, and the mom is very inconsistent at church, but she came to church one time, saw the dad, blew up the whole bit. Okay? So now, he says what's happening is um, the dad has been missing for the last several weeks and tells me he's trying different churches. He admits that nothing is quite the same and he misses us, but the kids are the ones who will suffer in this fight. So for their sake, I'm bowing out. I'm going to find another church. Yeah. So he says, I'm losing a high-impact leader, and I'm afraid that I might lose the kids too. I'm afraid the resentment that comes from dad being highly involved in the youth group to dad at a different church will make them not want to come to church with mom, especially since they obviously are the filter from which mom informs uh, dad of frustration. Do I sit back, here's the question, and watch a great leader, an upcoming student leader, and potential future student leader walk out the door in exchange for a fringe church participant? That's the mom. By the way, she hasn't been back since the blow-up occurred two months ago. Neither has the dad. Kids' attendance has dropped to about 50%. Mm. He Gosh. says, after rereading this, I realize this could sound selfish. I might be too focused on how it affects me, but is there anything I can do in this situation? It feels like my hands are tied, and I have to just sit back and watch it happen. That's a good question. Yeah. Wow. My first response is, that's so, so sad. <sighs> okay. Now let me move on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, but I, I absolutely think I need to put the mom aside for a second and I'd go to the dad because he's life on life with the, bo the yeah. boys. But I think um, I'd go after that dad for sure. I'd go after that dad and have a conversation with him. And I, I, I'd say, you have the freedom to go wherever you need to. I get it. You're, you're in a new season of life and it's hard and it's messy. I get it. But, but I need you to know that there's a ripple effect in what you're happening and in, in what's happening here. If, if you would be so kind, at least pray about meeting with your guys and telling them, here's what's been so hard. Here's what's hard. I, I, I love you. I care about you. You can still be a part of my life and I'm yours. Um, it just needs to look different because I'm, I'm kind of, my, my life is kind of messy. I'm trying to figure out the pieces. But I love you. I care about you. I just think if he can go after that dad and get the dad to communicate care, even though it's messy, and maybe the youth leader is with him. Maybe that would be helpful. I don't know. Actually, that probably would be very helpful. My guess would be because then, then these boys who are left without the, the small group leader have a connection with the youth pastor as well, and they have another kind of a go-to person. So um, that, I would go after the dad, go after the dad's heart, and ask him to please follow up with the guys and make him available as possible. I mean, my two cents. Even though he's in the midst of a messy divorce, you think he still has the capacity to well, nurture and shepherd those guys? No, no, no. I don't think he does. Has the capacity yeah. to nurture and shepherd? It's probably not. But to communicate, I'm messy right now, and it doesn't. Have, it's no reflection off of you at all. It's my life yeah. that's messy. But I want you to know, I care about you, and I wish I could still be in your lives, but I just can't. Yeah. But so communicating the pause. Yeah, of communicating like, the pause, pause, and and this yeah. is yeah. this is a bummer. This is sad. It's yucky. But I love you and I care about you guys and you know, and I'd love for you to still have a relationship here at this church. This is not about Jesus, it's about me and my wife that are messy. So make make sure the theology is even separated from God, from the person, you know, that there can be so much transference when a leader leaves about yeah. their belief of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um so Sounds okay. good. I think for me the, the the reason that having grown up in the church that I that I that I still follow Christ so much is that I see him meet us in the dark messy places of life mm -hmm. and to me we sometimes hide a lot of that from um, yes. youth in the church and so they, they don't mm -hmm. see our whole history they don't see the painfulness and they don't see God reveal himself in that and so it's almost like we're denying the glory of God when we don't allow this stuff to, to be worked yeah. through yes. and, um, and, and you know I mean uh, YS founder Mike Iaconelli wrote Messy Spirituality and it's one of the bedrocks I think of, of the way we look at things but mm -hmm. I think it's um, it gives glory to God to let kids get and see the mess and then to see the God that, that 
brings us through it mm -hmm. over the course of sometimes a long period of time, right? That God isn't quick fix. Here's an answer and it's all done. Yeah. Um, that, that there's a journey that our our humanity and, 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 and working with God works itself out. So I think I, I, I agree with Megan that they're appeal to the, the heart of the Father and try to use that as an opportunity to really show God's hand in that. Yeah. It's good. I <clears throat> I like the fact that he ends with I might be too focused on how it affects me. Yeah. Because as I was reading it, that's what I was feeling yeah. in this situation that uh, really as a leader, I mean, let's be honest, as we all know this, when you're working in the church and you lose a good leader, mm. it is like, it's painful. It, is, it is rough. What's it, what's it like? Well, how do you lose potential students he's losing? Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's the you know, state. When I stopped volunteering, the youth attendance went up. <laughs> <laughs> so there, <laughs> there, there, is, got a raise. <laughs> there is that selfish part where you're going, oh, oh no. Yeah. Yeah. But really, for pastoring this, this ministry. You already lost the leader. You got to put the family first in this situation, yeah. James. And yeah. I think you just have to go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna care for this family and help this family and navigate this family. And you know what? I promise you that is not going to be the last leader you lose. Yeah. And so the feeling it gets a little easier over the years, but it never gets easy when you lose a, a great leader. Yeah. So anyway, you have the opportunity to show Jesus and and how the church takes care of people. And for a teenager, what a beautiful picture for them to see how yeah. the church takes care of people. Well, and and give him a next step in the church. You know, I think when we have volunteers, either we've asked to step down because they're in an unhealthy season mm -hmm. or they're going through something and they've pulled themselves out. I think we've always tried really hard to give them some next steps of here's, let us be a part of this intentional plan of healing, yeah. you know, and it might, it's not going to be in the youth ministry. It's going to be, you know, in the church and it's going to be great. And we'll be a part of that with you yeah. over here. And then maybe youth ministry will, will maybe we'll cycle back around at mm -hmm. some point. But I think even just giving them, even for you to think through a few next steps for dad and for mom, you know, even if mom comes back six months from now, just in your mind, be thinking of where are a couple places I can point them or a couple of, or a person I can point them to, to kind of start that journey. That's good. That's good. Very good. Thank you, Katie. Um, all right, good show. Matlock, thanks for being here. Hey, Megan, thank thanks for being here. So fun. Youth Specialties, thanks for being our primary sponsor and That's connecting right. and caring about what we do at Download Youth Ministry. And uh, we're always cheering Sorry, you on. Sorry we asked you for eight things well, today. Unfortunately, I'm going to take that sign with me when we leave. I think we're done. That's right. Hey, what's, what's, we're wrapping this what's up. What's my motivational core? <laughs> Impact, right? Make yeah, yeah, make, make, well, that was the other one. Yeah. And, that, and that's the thing. It wasn't just one. There are three, and they all work together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just would like to look at the list and figure out my own. Do I have to go through the whole process? You know process? what? Hey, yeah. you know what? Yeah. Really here's do. the deal. Of I'm going to pay. Is it 99 bucks? Yeah, I'm gonna pay for the you, 99 bucks for you. For 120. What if my core motivation is not on the list? But I'll give you a 17 percent discount <laughs> from Leader Trust. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I'm not it sure. Not I'm not be. sure you make any list. Love you guys. Oh, See, you yeah. Bye. See you, guys. Bye. Bye. I'm so tired of being called an Eeyore.